Funny enough, International Magic and I, we met back in sort of February through mutual friends. And already we were talking about what the future of shows were. We were like, is it the future to keep on flying hundreds of thousands of people across the world to see a sort of a show that is in the same place in, in real time, that is often an expel, expensive, but we were thinking about sustainability sort of along that way. A hugely expensive build, you know, loads of waste, like blah, blah, blah. This is, it's sort of unsustainable. Is That doesn't sort of feel like the future. What would the future be? And we, so we were already sort of having that conversation when the pandemic sort of like came into its like full fruition and we went into lockdown. We were talking about reality. We were talking about, we started to be discussing, the conversations we started started to be our, our reality. Like, okay, this is now no longer sort of like what would the future be it's like what is now what is what is happening now and that so it was like unfolding so we were it became a commentary on what we were actually experiencing what everyone was experiencing and I'm not a very digital person at all so the one of the big things was how do you translate a multi mode show into a digital experience so my shows are much rooted in the people that are there do you know what I mean I'm very like into the environment I'm very into like other people I'm very into the atmosphere is there a way of translating that mood in a digital way you know because the, one of the negative things about digital space is that it doesn't hard to capture an atmosphere or you know warm it's sort of everyone's sort of familiar with Martine's DNA it's all about this sort of sense of community so from like the very first show that we did together back in 2017 you know we took people completely out of their comfort zones took them to somewhere they'd never go before like in the depths of seven sisters and indoor market you know it was cold Sunday night there was a tube strike but there was this sort of sense of warmth and community and everyone was really energized by the show you know you went in and it was a real mix of guest lists so a really important part of of what we do for Martine is ensuring it's a really inclusive show. So we have a real mix of people that are part of the audience and we have a real sort of, the setting is really important. Like when we did the show in London, on the, Kent, on the street in Kentish Town, the Love Letter to London, again, all the neighbours were out, all the children were out. We've done, like, we've done mini dinners in Paris where her mum and dad have been there alongside top tier editors. So there's a really sort of, it's a really quite, you know, an important part of Martine's DNA is this sort of warmth and community and celebration of just realness and real people. She sort of almost sees like a, a beauty in the normal, doesn't she? And so it just felt, even before COVID started, it just sort of felt like everyone was moving towards this more digital environment, a more digital platform and how we would explore that. But little did we know that the more we explored it, the more relevant it would become later down the line. We still wanted that sense of a show because obviously it was a discussion whether something lives on forever, you know, and you have this sort of digital imprint that people can just go back and visit and visit. But I felt like I still wanted the experience of a show. So a time to show up. And if you were there, you were there. And if you, and if you weren't, you, you weren't. So it, it will like live on in other, in various guises, but you won't get the experience of that full sort of the full experience again. So it's like, because then that's, create something that you talk about do you know what I mean it's like oh did you do that thing or did you go to that club no that, that's also the conversation the show is about 15 minutes long the live show but we, we really want to kind of get people into the space beforehand so they can experience the uh, the pre-show this is like the pre-show environment you can scroll to move around the space um, these are actually CCTV screens where you can see who's inside the rooms so this is like this is where you arrive so when you arrive on the site there's these big CCTV screens where you can see into the rooms and you can kind of get an immediate vibe and then you can scroll to like explore the space. We use the environments that are around us and I guess we've done the same here. We ran through like a lot of different doors and we also introduced pictures with like uh, references and kind of background imagery from Martine. Also like old kind of rave posters and mm. things that Martine went to when she was younger. So there's like a nice little bit of history there as well. We wanted it to be quite a... Um, quite a personal experience. So we kind of removed any of the obvious like distractions. It's just you in the space, very much like a real venue. It opens up for that particular time and then it's gone. We've just shot people in their own environment. So it, they're, they're domestic environments. They're, they're environments that we've all been seeing for the past year. So it's just utilizing, again, it's utilizing the spaces that are available to us.
and they range you know obviously because we're going across the world from Ramallah to Tokyo to Russia and so to some degree the interiors reflect that space and then in terms of the digital space that we've created so the actual that's the spaces that we go because we go into everyone's rooms we go into everyone's houses um, and then the digital space I wanted to create an environment that was like a domestic environment so it was very much based on Brutus, you know, the Barbican Centre or Blight. We want, I wanted a sense of community there to house everyone. So a sense of a, a communal space, a sense of outside, inside, of people living together. That's what we wanted to create. Initially, we started talking about this, this feeling of isolation and loneliness, um, you know, that a lot of people were feeling at the time due to the new situation. So we kind of wanted to bottle that feeling and capture that feeling and almost like this time capsule of this moment in time. And we were looking at um, Panopticon structure, which is a containment structure from America in the 1920th century. And for us, that was like a really interesting starting point because it had well, a number of rooms in this big cylinder. So Panopticon is a huge cylinder with jail cells on the outside um, with a kind of single guard tower in the middle. And the idea was that the behavior of the prisoners would improve because they, they didn't know when they were being watched. Quite an interesting concept, but what we wanted to kind of take that concept and flip it and then turn it turn it around so it wasn't a prison. It was more like a kind of a communal community environment. So eventually we decided that we were going to create this um, three-dimensional digital environment where this community could exist. So then the task was to kind of build build this community with Martin. So we discussed the idea of like, what can you do in a digital environment that you can't do in a physical environment? You can obviously get people from all over the world to like form this kind of like virtual community. We were researching communal spaces, community buildings. We were looking into brutalism quite heavily. One of the reasons we were looking into brutalism, obviously it's a lot of the um, kind of communal spaces and council flats and that sort of thing are built in this style. We were trying to translate this environment into a website. We had to make sure that the geometry was quite simple. So we started exploring loads of different architects, you know, like Le Corbusier, also um, the Indian architect, Balkrishna Doshi. Some of the main drivers for it, for the space, is that it had to be habitable. So it had to feel like people lived there and people existed there and lived their lives. We, we really wanted to make it feel very London as well. Obviously, Martin's from London, it's based here. So um, we didn't want to move too far away from that quite British aesthetic. British architecture, we looked so much on also modernism and the idea of the universal system that was like the 1950s, how can we all live in a structure together? So having that uniform bare architecture where you inhabit it with all the Easter eggs and the carpets, which was such a beautiful process of having like strict lines, a very geom geometric space. The real like inhabitants are the drones in there. It's a funny way of having the technology and the human touch, the architect's technology and then the actual the videos of the human. It's a language that people quite easily understand now, actually, as well, that the, the drone as a vehicle for, like, for movement and getting places, but also, you know, cameras and surveillance. One of the early references we talked about in detail was Chat Roulette, which was the, like the website where you could just open a webcam on a random person, which was, I don't know, you probably used it like back in the day, but it's, um, yeah, we, we, we loved that vibe where you, you don't know what's coming next. Everyone has sort of gone online, everyone is having new experiences online. And what I was sort of interested in is, yeah, this sort of like digital interaction that people are having, like communicating on Zoom and all of that sort of stuff a lot more. And you have an idea when you start a project of what you want it to be, but you have to give it enough space to be what it is also. Do you know what I mean? You have to be flexible enough for it to unfold, as it, particularly with a project like this where you're we sort of depend, we're very dependent on the people. We do street cast, as you know, so they're not models. We are really allowing the people that we've chosen to sort of tell their own story, to choose what they want to show a bit. This was like street casting, like next level. But there was like such a freedom in it, right? Because you don't have the same limits that you have when you're trying to ship everyone to one place and get them to walk down a catwalk. There are certain things that someone has to be a certain you know, a certain height, a certain, do you know what I mean? All of those sort of things. There aren't those limits when you're sort of shooting someone in their environment doing like really domestic things. So it was just, it was so fun. First and foremost, it has always been the, the character. It's always Martine. 
but it's always, I think intuitively also, we know what, what is Martin. We also had this time where we were able to like craft clothes around the people. So it was less about them needing to fit our sort of standard idea of a model. Martin's always a bit more flexible with height and things like that. But with this, we were kind of able to also structure them around the individuals. We also didn't want to like tick boxes, if that makes sense. Like you can't include everything, even though you might want to. We still had to bring it down to the 24 different rooms. We were kind of looking at the majority through Instagram. And you just get a feeling about a person by the way they present themselves, images they post of themselves, what captions they have. And then obviously once we had contacted them, they would also like share a video and we'd get to feel them a bit more. Normally we would have a lot of people come in um, try the clothes on and they would get a chance to speak to Martine and Tamara. But we, we didn't really have that time to, to go in that depth with so many people because initially we casted like hundreds. We had some one in Jamaica, Algeria, Palestine, Kenya, Korea, Japan, London. Of course, we had to bring it back to London. We had this freedom to do a lot, but at the same time, you still had to like rein it back and find the right balance as well with the characters. We went like so many different places with the casting when we were starting. We had like looking at people with a lot of plastic surgery and then looking at a lot of people with like just wild characters that Marty would not normally work with. We were able to work with, but I think as we started to like build the story, a lot of those wild cards kind of didn't make sense to a degree because we needed to still find Martine Rose within those people. And I think that's where it became quite interesting is it was all again kind of finding the extraordinary in the ordinary. Usually we have, we're quite like against having people with a higher follower count or like a major celebrity involved. Whereas with this project, we were able to go there because you're literally stepping into someone's home, which is not normally what they would carry with them. So you got this whole nother level in the way that their body language was. We managed to get this like familiarity in their body language because they're used to being in that space. There was like less of like a wall. I feel like Martine's clothes, there's like a sensitivity about them. Like it's been sensitivity in the character she creates. When you're having someone coming into a studio, or into a fitting, they're like coming with their energy. Whereas if you have someone like a celebrity watching TV, there's like, also with the audience, I feel like they get a different side of this person. Like um, there's almost like, you can make a connection between them, not not being such like a hierarchical thing, if you if you know what I mean, like suddenly, they are the same as you. Maybe I'm wrong to this, but maybe sometimes the clothes are quite hot, like scary to wear or quite hard to wear when we've got like these men's camisoles and these suspender belts. And, you know, sometimes I think people look at it and think like, well, well like, how am I ever going to wear that? But I guess the intimate part was trying to explain to people that just try it, you know, like try it on. It wasn't as difficult as what they thought. And then they put it on and and then yeah they felt really easy in it i always love it when you see other people wearing it and it just feels quite normal it's amazing to see how different it can look something that you wouldn't do in a lookbook because you're like oh that's not strong enough then you put it on someone and it's just like a hoodie and a tracksuit and you think oh that that looks really good <laughs> i'd had a lot to do with you know the, the creative direction of what they were also doing yeah. so i think it was also a different way to go about shooting something They're very different for martin and i you know we were sending them different packages of creatives so we decided martin and i quite early on that just to show somebody stills is not enough when you're asking them to do video and you're not there to help them out. We were putting together like bits of different video footage from all over the world, from all over like the last 50 years, almost of like cinema of all different things, you know, news bits, this bit, that bit. And then like almost like putting them together to show, show people like if you can just do that. It's quite simple. It's nothing that big, but it all, just to help encourage people with body language and getting them to relax a little bit because it'd be like me meeting you and being like, okay, so can you just be quite normal in your home? 
it's, it's kind of quite impossible. <laughs> and it's quite hard to do it in a way that you think no one's looking at you. A lot, a lot of people, we just, you know, talk to them, show them inspiration, talk them through things and set up the camera angles and what we liked and then we just let them do it. We'd all be on a WhatsApp together and they send us things and we'd say like, oh, can you do a bit more of that or oh, that look really good? Let's try that again. One girl in, uh, in, in Canada, she was like on the phone to her mum while she was filming. She was just like, yeah, I'm, so I'm modelling, but they just, they don't want me to do anything. <laughs> they just want me to, you know, and she's like, it's great. I'm just doing nothing. Literally chopping bread or brushing your teeth, putting on your socks. I think that's like the beauty, isn't it? Is when somebody doesn't know that they're being looked at and you're looking at them. It's a bit like being a fly on the wall. When you're moving into a room, but then it's also, it's flying away while the video is still playing. It's like mm. passing by a window on the street and then seeing a glimpse of something mundane. Play, it's playing into the, like, the human desire to always look through somebody's window when you're walking by and there's an opportunity to do that yeah. like 24 times in a row and not feel bad about it it's so beautiful to watch the details of people's lives the bits that no one you know are so boring you know we're all doing really boring shit at the moment no one's doing fun stuff frankly and that's the, the interesting the interesting thing is, is that that's the whole world no one in the whole world is doing like interesting stuff everyone is doing these sort of monotonous like seemingly mundane things but in that there's such a sort of humanity watching someone brush their teeth uh, or pot a plant or shave their head or whatever all over the world somehow becomes really engaging and warm. It feels really relatable and it's interesting. I didn't, I underestimated that actually at the beginning or I thought it would be quite funny and like, I don't really know what I thought. Maybe it would be funny and sort of cool to watch people doing things, but I didn't realize how compelling to watch tiny details would be. What became more interesting actually was just the, the living and the like breathing in the clothing and like brushing your teeth and watching TV and playing with your dog. These things were more interesting than trying to like kind of falsely create like a sexiness within it. That when we were casting the people that if I put in like a clear thing of what each person needed to have, it was like confidence, like the willingness to be open with us, to kind of know themselves without like any self-consciousness, like know who they are and where they live and the, like where they, what their place in the world is rather than like coming in and like performing for us. You're casting personalities and you're casting houses. That's part of the casting process as well. Because also something that you find is that at the world over, everyone's got the same shit. Everyone's got Ikea shit. It's so weird. You, we thought like, oh yeah, we're going to go to like blah, blah, blah. And we're, it's going to look so different. And no, they, it doesn't. Everyone's bedroom, the world over, looks the same. It's got the same shit furniture in. It's got the same like Ikea stuff. It's got the same. It's just, it's really interesting. We underestimated that. So then we realised that we couldn't have every single room looking the same because that was not the point. So then we realised we had to have a second board that was like casting houses and casting rooms and stuff. So there's diversity on, on every sort of level. There's diversity in the personalities, there's diversity in the cast, there's diversity in their rooms. And that's also what you find, like, people are just great. <laughs> and that's what I want people to come away with it, feeling like people are amazing. They, and they, like, for no reason, they're just... They're just great. They're they're funny and they're interesting, and there's there's like we're the we're the same.